Joe Rogan and Bill Maher blasted the politicization of the search for the origin of COVID-19, particularly the lab leak theory, during an interview on the Joe Rogan Experience Tuesday. Let's watch. We have lots of ways to stop people from talking short of killing them and pushing them out of windows and stuff. But, I mean, a lot of people would say I would be one of them that, you know, cancel culture and uh, intimidating people and stamping out uh, thought that isn't, uh, you know, our friend Elon Musk getting into Twitter, I think, is about that. It's right. about somebody saying, you know, it, it wasn't cool that they didn't allow the lab leak theory to be talked about right. for months. You couldn't even mention it. And it, that is certainly something that was open to question. I mean, it was like, to me, the very kind of issue that if Twitter was really doing the job it should, would be a healthy forum for people to go back and forth and say, well, here's why I think COVID probably came from bats, because A, B, and C, and then, well, but, you know, there was this lab in Wuhan that was studying coronaviruses, and somebody could have walked out with it on their shoe. Can't we even look into that? For Twitter to take that off, that, to me, was a huge red flag. It's crazy. It was crazy because it wasn't resolved. One share world founder, Jamie Metzl, argued on Twitter, quote, we all remain at unnecessary risk until we determine how the COVID-19 pandemic began and address our greatest vulnerabilities. Any serious investigation of this issue must address the following 23 questions. So we won't read all 23 questions to you right now. However, senior fellow at the Atlantic Council and author of Hacking Darwin, Jamie Metzl, joins us now to discuss. Welcome. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy to have you. So, you know, why don't you tell us what are the thrust of, of your questions? You know, what is the, the kind of question we need to be prepared to answer if we're going to be prepared for the next pandemic? Well, let me take you a little bit back. In the earliest days of uh, 2020, in the very beginning of the, uh, of the pandemic, I was one of the small number of people who were raising big questions about the origins. There was what I saw then and see now as an unsupportable um, orthodoxy of uh, some leading scientists enforced by most mainstream media saying that they knew uh, that ca it came from nature. And I, star I started raising big questions about does it come potentially from a lab? Um, others started to do that. We were a very, very small group and we worked very hard and have worked hard for now almost uh, two and a half years uh, and it's just insane that now, uh, two and a half years after the initial outbreak, there's no comprehensive investigation into pandemic origins. Um, uh, China is engaged in a massive cover-up that's involved destroying samples, um, hiding records, uh, imprisoning citizen journalists. They have a universal gag order preventing Chinese scientists from saying or writing anything about pandemic origins. Uh, their databases have, uh, have disappeared. Uh, so there are lots and lots of questions that are potentially answerable that aren't being answered because primarily of, uh, of China's cover-up. And if we don't demand answers and if we don't get to the bottom of how this crisis began and our, and our other uh, shortcomings, we're going to be at terrible risk going forward. And that's even more important because we're entering the new era of synthetic biology uh, where we know that pathogens much more dangerous than SARS-CoV-2 uh, um, can be developed in labs. I think you're right, Jamie, that one of the biggest red flags was the confidence with which very, very early on in the pandemic, people were saying it absolutely has a, a natural origin. We know this conclusively. Almost immediately people were saying that, including a lot of interested parties who would be at fault and potentially liable in the billions and trillions of dollars if they were ever found responsible. I'm curious whether there has been a shift in the interest in having an official investigation now that we are all allowed to talk about lab leak theory and other origins on the internet. Well, there's been some shift, um, but not enough. There's mm -hmm. a bill in the United States Congress that is in draft form. It's been bouncing back and forth, calling for a bipartisan, comprehensive U.S. National COVID-19 Commission. Um, shockingly, that bill has not yet passed. We need that, just like we needed a 9-11 uh, commission in a bar bipartisan way to get to the bottom of what happened. On an international level, um, uh, China manipulated a process in the World Health Assembly, which is the parent body of the World Health Organization. And so there was 
really kind of a, a sham of an early process called a joint study, which was controlled by the Chinese government. Um, the great leadership of Dr. Tedros of the WHO abolished that body and replaced it with an international group called SAGO, the Scientific Advisory Group on the Origins of Novel Pathogens. That group is trying to do some kind of preliminary investigation, but China is not uh, cooperating. So we really need to get to the bottom of this, and we need to hold China accountable for this terrible and dangerous cover-up. So, Jamie, um, you know, and by the way, I was one of those people that early on, it was at the end of March 2020, I did a video on my own show. We're talking about the lab leak and some of the things that were being, um, you know, some of the theories that were out there regarding the lab leak. And it got it got removed, by the way. They called it misinformation. They removed it, wasn't allowed to talk about it. This was at the end of March of 2020. I mean, just really crazy. Um but question for you, so there seems to be some hesitation by the WHO and even Fauci to investigate the Chinese lab. Now, there's, of course, other labs that potentially maybe could be investigated. I'm not sure um, where we're at on, for example, like Fort Detrick or um, the UNC Chapel Hill labs. Like, uh, you know, is there any interest in looking at lab leaks from those labs or is that considered conspiracy from what i i we, we've actually had a guest on here who at one point said no 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 not willing to talk about that that's the conspiracy theory we can talk about the chinese lab leak can't talk about possibly north american lab leaks but where are we at with for example the who and fauci who seem to be um i i, I mean almost seem to be helping run interference for the chinese I don't think that the premise of that question is correct. Uh, Dr. Tedros has called for a full audit of the Wuhan labs. Uh, he's called on uh, Chinese authorities to make all uh, relevant raw data available. He reiterated that just last week when he was uh, visiting uh, the United States Congress. Uh, Dr. Fauci has also called uh, for the Chinese labs to become, uh, to make those materials um, available. Um, certainly, we should follow the evidence wherever it leads. Right now, there is zero evidence of a connection, um, of any connection between uh, COVID-19 origins and Fort Detrick. Um, so, but if there should, evidence should emerge making that connection, by all means, um, we should investigate there. But uh, this whole claim that are Chinese-led claims saying that this is all about uh, Fort Detrick, we should recognize that as baseless uh, propaganda. That doesn't mean we shouldn't look into it. Uh, it doesn't mean that if, if there's uh, some evidence should emerge, uh, we shouldn't take it seriously. Uh, but that's why uh, we need to have an evidence-based process, a comprehensive evidence-driven process to get to the bottom of what happened. I, I would uh, phrase Kim's question slightly differently. I think my own um, skepticism or concern about whether you know health, US-based health officials like Dr. Fauci, et cetera, are eager enough to ask the right questions. I, I was put, I was not put at ease by how this kind of gain of function distinction was handled by them saying, well, oh no, this really isn't what we're talking about. You're wrong about that. It doesn't feel, uh, it doesn't give the public, I think a lot of confidence that these people who have, who are very clear that they support doing this kind of research and that it's appropriate to fund this kind of research. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I guess it makes me worried that they're going to you know, look as hard as they should look at whether this kind of research and you know, whether it was our lab or their lab, whatever. I, I, I take your point that you know, it's, it's really only uh, we don't have a, a reason yet to look at our own lab. Well, we should look at them. We don't have you know, reason to suspect. But will they actually be, be as willing as they should be to ask those hard questions if it reflects poorly on the the fund the choice to fund this kind of research right. yeah it's a good it's a good question first on the gain of function um i felt that that whole debate between rand paul and uh, dr fauci it was a little bit unfortunate because both of them were right in their own way uh dr fauci mm -hmm. was right that in the narrow technical definition of gain of function um what the united states uh the nih supported in Wuhan, by their definition, was not gain of function. And Rand Paul was right uh, that let's just use common sense interpretation <laughs> of gain of function is where you have a virus and you give it some additional functions and it looks like uh, the United States uh, uh, supported that. Uh, but there's a broader issue, uh, and I've tweeted a lot about that and, and spoken a lot of that, is that we know that in early February, uh, Jeremy Farrar, the head of the Wellcome Trust in the UK, organized a phone call with top experts and doctors 
Fauci and Collins. And a lot of those experts um, raised uh, possibilities uh, that this could be uh, some, that the uh, COVID-19 pandemic could stem from some kind of accidental lab incident. But just a few days later, a number of the people on that call uh, participated in putting a paper uh, that was later published in uh, the, the journal Nature Medicine that really set the tone for how mainstream media and the general public thought about and spoke about pandemic origins just a few days later, and it didn't uh, reflect those concerns. So it does look um, like there was there were certainly a lot of questions in the early days, but some leading officials uh, decided that it was in many ways too dangerous to have an open conversation about that time and began to guide the conversation in one in, in one direction. And that's not what the scientific um, process looks like. So while I'm extremely uh, critical of the Chinese government, we need to have a bipartisan investigation looking at everything, including ourselves. It wouldn't be credible if we said this is just about China. This is about the world. And to build a safer world, we need to look at everything. Jamie Metzl, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. We'll have more rising right after this.